But to keep making content using Big Daddy's name, Big Daddy's name, and Big Daddy's fame. Hey everyone, just wanted to come on here and talk about a few things that have been going on in the community lately. Wanted to address the recent arrest of Savage Studios and the last few videos that he's put out. I'm going to do my usual breakdown, a timeline summary of events, and then play some clips and provide commentary. I'd like to apologize ahead of time for any background noise you may hear. I am making this video on the 4th of July, and I live in Los Angeles, and it sounds like a war zone. <laughs> Anyways, back to the video. For those of you that don't know, Savage Studios was arrested on June 11th at 1.39 p.m. at a Walmart in Yucca Valley, California. He was then charged with stalking, soliciting a lewd act, and was scheduled to appear in court on June 24th. While in court, the judge dropped the soliciting a lewd act charges. However, he was convicted of stalking. He was given formal probation with time served and was released on June 25th at 11.28 p.m. After being released on the 25th, he posted his first video to YouTube on June 30th titled Let's Talk About It, Back from the Lion's Den. Then he went on to post his second video on July 2nd titled First Hand Experience of Jail During This Pandemic. Then yesterday he posted his third video on July 3rd, Fake Gangsters Are Easy to Spot. Okay, well that about wraps up Savage's timeline. I wanted to rewind it back a little bit though to talk about what was going on in the community while Savage was incarcerated. I think it was about June 16th or 17th, people started talking about Savage Studios was arrested and people didn't really know if it was a rumor or not. And then somebody got a hold of his paperwork and then JD from Prison Break Raw put out a video on June 19th. As most of you probably know, Savage Studios and JD from Prison Break Raw don't get along anymore. They used to get along, but they just don't anymore. However, JD was more than fair with his video he put out about Savage. And man, oh man, was Savage feeling a certain type of way about that video. <laughs> he was big mad that JD had quote unquote Big Daddy's name in his mouth. Big Daddy's fame. I can't with that. Can we have a moment of silence for Savage's self-awareness, please? Anyhow, we'll get back to those two later on in the video and that whole situation. Right now, I'd like to play you a clip out of his first video. I'm going to play you guys a few clips, and I'm going to add commentary after, and then, you know, wrap it up later. Everybody, it's your boy Savage, Savage Studios. Y'all already know what time it is. Uh, I'm on the way to go pick up my son, man, uh, and resume my regular life. Uh, sorry for my voice being a little off. You know, sometimes the turnip is a little too real, I guess. But today we will be getting into a pretty juicy topic. Tomorrow's video will be about doing time during the pandemic. So if you like this video, smash that thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you ain't subscribed yet. And I would like to say just a brief general synopsis of what this video will be about. We'll be covering the situation in which I went through. I won't be getting into depths of any sort, really. So if that's what you're looking for, it's best you click off and bounce immediately. I owe nobody an explanation. The only explanation I do feel like I owe anybody that I can say, never have I ever had to file under any type of weird charge or register as any type of offender, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to address the turn up comment first, and then I'll get to the I owe my subscribers nothing comments. So... I don't know what he meant by turn up. I mean, was he arguing and yelling and crying and carrying on with Brittany? Like, that's why his eyes were all puffy and his voice is all messed up? Or did he mean turn up in the way of partying? Like, the turn up is real. I mean, was what were, did you go to a concert? What, where were you yelling? I don't know. Anyways, that part's not important. What I really wanted to talk about was how he owes nobody any type of explanation. He can say he's not part of the prison community all he wants, but the truth is is that his channel is based on his experiences while incarcerated, in prison, in jail, in juvie, prison workouts, burpees, and prison spread recipes, you name it. Even when he does videos on other people, it's always centered around crime and doing time. The only reason why he's not sharing an explanation as to why he was charged with stalking and soliciting a lewd act is because it's hella embarrassing. Because I would be willing to bet a whole bunch of money that 
if he got arrested for beating some fool's ass, that he'd be dropping every single solitary detail. We would never hear the end of how old Savage whooped that fool's ass. It would have been a shit show of showboating. It would have been, look at me, look at me, look at me for the entire summer of 2020. Anyways, let me get on to playing another clip from his first video. As for why I deleted my Instagram, it gets so... It's it's no more easier than this, and it's not gonna get it's not ever gonna get any easier than this answer. Fifteen thousand followers, fifteen point something actually. Not one was there for. I, I think one of my boys he was gonna drop some money or was getting ready to. <clears throat> you know who you are, and much love. Other than that, it was a whole bunch of people telling my girl. Yeah, um, I'm gonna send this or I'm gonna send that and not doing it. Instagram was always like a source of issues for me and my beautiful wife. Uh, because although I wasn't a gang member and I wasn't a criminal anymore and I was not partaking, I don't, I don't, do, that's why it was hard for me to do time this time around because I'm a family man. I still wasn't a good guy, uh, and I could have been a lot better to Brittany as far as loyalty, commitment, and faithfulness goes, you know? Um, <clears throat> so when, when push came to shove, it was the easiest decision to make to get rid of it because I had a whole bunch of fake people on there. Out of 15,000, maybe 15,000 were fake by Instagram. Wow. Just wow. People said they were going to send money but didn't do it. I'm not sure how long the time window was from when these people said they were going to send money to his cash app and, you know, by the time they closed their Instagrams down. I'm not sure what that time window was like, how long she was waiting around for these donations. But you know what? People have it rough right now and you cannot expect people to carry you financially. Don't get me wrong, I'm not shading him for putting a cash app up or a PayPal up or getting super chats. Get that money. I'm all about that. However, being so entitled is to say 15,000 followers were 15,000 fake people because they didn't pay you? Come on now. And Instagram's a problem because of fake people or because you cheated on your wife in front of everybody on Instagram? Oh yeah, it's about to go down. I was heartbroken when I saw that. Seriously, I felt so bad for Brittany. You know, just openly disrespecting her, no regard, bragging about it to all his subscribers and followers on Instagram. It's disgusting. But anyhow, I can't help but think that this whole stalking at Walmart thing has to do with a girl that he's cheating on Brittany with. Because that clip on Instagram I just showed you is from only four weeks ago. Next clip I'm going to play you is a little bit of his first video and a little bit of his third video. He's talking about ganging subscribers and he's also talking about losing subscribers. And I kind of felt like there were some inconsistencies there because I hadn't seen his numbers move at all. And I have screenshots to back that up. I am humbled. I am absolutely humbled by you haters. And I welcome you, I appreciate you, and I sure hope you don't stop. I sure hope you don't forget about me. Because you kept my income steady 
and solid. We kept my subscriber counts going up. Maybe it wasn't going as fast as it used to be, but it still jumps pretty cool. 30 minutes, 40 minutes goes by. I swipe to reload the screen. There's 30 more subscribers, give or take. Get over, you know, and, and you know what? I've been losing shit. I've lost hundreds of subscribers uh, within these few days releasing these last videos I did, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful because I needed you gone. It's a weeding process. I would rather weed you out. Someone told me that I, out of 100,000 subscribers, they made a comment that 80,000 of them want to see me dead. Well, you know what I wish? I wish all 80,000 of you guys would get lost, get a life, get a pair, unsubscribe, go do something with yourself, and leave me with the 20,000 who want to see me win. Because just like I got this first 100,000, I can get the next 100,000 and the next 100,000. I'm that qualified. I just can't. The fool has the audacity to call himself humble. <laughs> I just can't with his arrogance, and I understand that it's part of his appeal and part of his personality or whatever. He's in your face and he's unapologetic, whatever. Funny thing is, there's this website called Social Blade, and it tracks your subscriber losses and your subscriber ganging and, you know, has all different kinds of graphs on your views and all that. Not just for YouTube, but Instagram and other social media platforms. I've screenshotted it so you can see from June 18th, 2020 to July 3rd, 2020, his subscriber count has not gone up or down. I have no idea why he would lie about something so stupid. I guess it's to reassure the haters that Big Daddy was, you know, doing really well while he was away. I don't know. You know, and then lying about losing subscribers that, like, oh, he doesn't care about it because he's just that qualified. I don't know. You know, <laughs> to be honest... A lot of his videos from the get-go were pretty suspect. I tried to support him in the beginning, it just, but he just got too arrogant and it kind of, you know, just rubbed me the wrong way. So one of his videos in the beginning that I felt like he was lying in was the Charles Manson video. I'm really familiar with that crime case and, you know, some of the things that he said Manson said, I just don't believe it. I believe that he probably saw him in passing at Corcoran because other prisoners have stories about that. However, Charles Manson drew him a picture and he mailed it home and he can't, he mailed it to his stepdad and he can't get a hold of that. Come on now, save it. Oh, and my favorite was, you know, during the Gabriel Fernandez case and all the videos he was doing on that. And, you know, that's when his channel started to really, really grow. And he claimed that he got information from death row that they were going to handle Pearl Fernandez's boyfriend up there. And, um, he, he showed some text messages he got, like you could fake those so easy. And also then he did that prison interview where he was interviewing that guy that was in prison. And that guy was supposedly the guy that delivered a message from the powers that be from, you know, that organization he loves so much. I told him, fuck liar, man. Yeah, that organization or gang or you know what I, you know, you guys know what I mean. Anyhow, he claimed that this guy that he was interviewing delivered a message from the powers that be and that the powers that be respectfully asked him to take that video down, revealing what was going to go down on death row with Pearl Fernandez's boyfriend. You know, I might be a female and I've never been to prison. However, I've had a lot of friends and family that have gone through the CDC and I'm well aware that the powers that be don't ask you to do anything that's just not the way it works and how could you be that reckless and potentially put your family in danger i just don't get it i don't understand it because i'm sure the powers that be are watching whether they care about savage or not i don't really know however he did say in one of his new videos that he was recognized when he went to jail he was recognized by inmates and he was recognized by co's let me play you a clip of that right here Tomorrow I got a crazy video dropping, even the next day, man. It's crazy how many deputies recognize me from Savage Studios. I was recognized by inmates, I was recognized by deputies, and I was shown nothing but love from everybody. Officers and inmates and everybody. No one came at me foul. No one uh no one tried to do me dirty, no one tried to tried to uh to play me, nothing like that. Um Caught a few fades, you know, caught a few fades behind some uh, personal matters. Um, but other than that, it was good. So I'm on a bumpy road right now. I just 
<laughs> Bumpy road, huh? That's one way to put it. This fool just literally can't stop contradicting himself. Every chance he gets, he gets in his own way. Okay, so you were met with nothing but respect. Caught a few fades. So, <laughs> it's like he had to throw that in there to make himself, you know, oh, I was fighting though. Even though I was respected, I was fighting. Okay. And let's not forget, in the beginning of the video, I showed you a clip where he said he had a hard time this go around while he was locked up because he's a family man now. And what does that even mean? Personal reasons. You got in a fight because of personal reasons. Why? Because maybe some inmates didn't like some of your content that they felt like you're exposing in-house game or maybe the dropout thing. I don't know. And by the way, I'm, I've never judged him for being a dropout. That's just not my place because like I said, I've never been to prison, so I'm not going to go sit in judgment for him on that. However, when he gets all tough guy calling out people for being a real gangster or not, kind of have a hard time with that being that he rolled it up not once but twice. Anyhow, on to the next clip. My girl held me down, y'all. Like I said, man, she held me down. Came running into my arms as soon as they released me. Jumped right into my arms. Everybody clapping, all the homies clapping. People I didn't even know it was getting released. Damn, homie, that's all you? Damn. You know, Brittany looking thicker than a snicker. Yeah. Uh, man. Totally vindicated, but it's all God. And I gotta thank God. Yeah, you ought to be thanking God that she's still with you. You're lucky, fool. And yes, Brittany is gorgeous. She is gorgeous. She's got a banging ass body. I think I already said that in this video, but she is really, really pretty. I imagine that some fools were looking. If there were even fools out there with you, though, because keep in mind he got released at 11.28 p.m. at night. And I'm, I'm familiar with L.A. County jail releases, not San Bernardino County jail releases. So... I don't know. I'm just picturing it that it's not quite as populated as LA County. And also COVID has kind of decreased population as well. I think that he mentioned in his video that processing didn't take that long at all. So I'm thinking that that timing is pretty accurate. I don't know. Who knows? But <laughs> I just don't picture it going down like that. I just picture that he's just being overdramatic. Just saying. There's one more thing I wanted to say about Brittany. I didn't want to bring her into this too much because I feel like she's been disrespected publicly enough already. However, in one of Savage's videos, he says that people, the reason why the comments were turned off is because people were going at her, hurting her feelings, saying mean things and going at his baby son. I didn't see any of that. All I saw were dudes like hitting on her in comment sections and <clears throat> dudes getting in live streams and trolling and saying... Don't don't anybody worry about Brittany now. She's at my house. I'm holding it down. Don't worry. She's going to be fine. Stuff like that, but nothing mean or hateful towards her or the baby. At least, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I didn't see it, and nobody I know saw it either. Now I want to address the whole thing with JD and Savage. I'm going to play you one or two clips right here, and then I'm going to wrap it up and finish the video. These... Uh, individuals who can, who can't, con who constantly cannot seem to uh, stop using my name, right? Who constantly feel the need to cleanse the prison community amongst society, right? Amongst YouTube for you guys, the ones who constantly feel this need to like cleanse things and and and, and make sure that the prison community is solid, right? And it's it's a void of any liars and and fakes and phonies. The type of person that they were in prison was a big mouth bitch. Either they were a big mouth bitch in prison or they were just a very, very, very quiet little church mouse who, you know, was reading the Bible or, or going to school, getting their GED. They weren't in the shoe like me. They weren't. Uh, hey, I wasn't in the shoe because I'm Rocky Balboa. I wasn't in the shoe because I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm, I was never in the shoe because I was Rambo. Never said that. I was in the shoe because I was a dumb young 
idiot. I did not listen to the good wisdom that was given to me. I did not take time to pay attention. I was I was quick to anger, very temperamental, very confrontational. Uh, just just on my own, just of, of my own accord, right? But one thing I never was, was a gossiper. And if I ever did speak to somebody, I brought it directly to them. And if I spoke behind their back, it was only because I couldn't get to their front in time. So I would tell everyone who would hear me, as soon as they land, as soon as I see them, I'm going straight to their grill with it. I'm going straight to their grill with what I'm telling you guys. I'm just letting you guys know right now this is what it is. You see, the whole prison community, the ones who want to talk and, and, and poke jabs behind the back and, and use me for content, it shows exactly what their what what their uh, situation was because when I address them straight up, man to man, uh, well, as much as I can because, you know, they're here, I'm there, they're here, I'm there, I'm trying to make it work, I'm trying to direct message, I'm trying to get to these dudes, they don't answer. But they make content to keep the community solid and cleansed and pure. And you guys listen. You guys believe the hype. You believe the hype. What is the truth? They're fake gangsters. Fake. Real gangsters would never, real gangsters would never waste a time, a, a second of any time on me. They would never waste a shred of their time, of the, of anything. I can understand if they have a bigger purpose. Let's say like if uh, they thought I was promoting something that goes against something that they want promoted, they could come out and just bash that. But to keep making content using Big Daddy's name, Big Daddy's name, and Big Daddy's fame, right? I know what kind of guy you were in prison, regardless whether or not your subscribers do, your friends do, your followers do. It's pathetic. I can't with that Big Daddy's name and Big Daddy's fame. I, I can't believe he could sit there with a straight face and say that about himself. Anyhow, as far as him saying, you know, people are believing the hype and buying into things and we're, you know, just a bunch of followers and whatever. That is textbook manipulative groundwork to get over on somebody, obviously. And unfortunately, he wants to probably get over on his subscribers and attempt to you know, preserve any relationships he might still have a chance at having with these people that he disrespected so badly. I bet you anything at this point he's going to probably put out an apology video, you know, preaching nothing but positivity and talking about how blessed he is and all this BS, which, you know, it's always like that with him. It's wash, rinse, repeat. He'll say arrogant things, piss people off and have a really dramatic positivity and good karma type apology video. Oh yeah, and I wanted to address the gossiping community cleansing comment. I'm pretty sure that comment is directed at JD. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. What I don't get is that what he is accusing JD of doing is any different from what he's doing. I've seen JD address Savage a couple times in a live stream and a video here and there. I've seen Savage do the same exact thing. So how come when Savage does it, it's a solid thing to do and a manly thing to do and he's just keeping it 100 and when JD does it, however, it's, you know, gossipy and bitch made. As far as having the community cleansed of liars and fakes and people that support bad things, kind of makes me feel like you might be worried about something. I don't know. Savage's manipulation tactics are just very textbook, very basic, and I can see right through them and I wish more could. As far as him calling out JD or anybody else for that matter, I just don't feel like he has a place to considering his background. Like I said, I don't judge him for dropping out. However, that kind of takes away your right to call out anybody for being a fake gangster. Kind of reminds me of the stunt that Takashi 6 9 is pulling, you know. He knows that the majority of people aren't having him. However, they're still going to watch him because it's drama and it's controversy. So he gets on live streams and says and does all this dumb shit and offends a whole bunch of people and supports horrible things. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyhow, I don't know. I guess Savage Studios is kind of like the poor man's Takashi 6 9 at this point, I guess. I don't know. He's even got the long hair and pigtails. Some of the other YouTubers have made funny names for Savage too. <laughs> I think Loked Out TV called him Stalker Studios and Indie Animal J called him Savage Self-Checkout Studios. I don't know. It's all in good fun. Don't get too mad, Savage. Oh yeah, speaking of Takashi 6 9 and supporting horrible things, I guess Savage Studios reached out to the sex offender Mighty Mouse and is going to organize a fight in California and call out all the YouTubers that made videos about him.
I'm going to put links in the description to all the videos that I saw that were made on Savage Studios. There was Loked Out TV, Indianimal J, The Spartan, Dog Pound 24-7, and Texas Prison Stories did a really good one, too. He really, he dropped the mic on that fool. And then, of course, there's JD from Prison Break Raw. His video was excellent. And then there was another guy who pretty much kind of created his channel for Savage, I think, because the name of the channel is Put It On The Table Studios. And he only has four videos, and they're all about Savage Studios. Anyways, I was going to end it here. However, I got a notification. And guess who just posted a video? Or guess who just posted an apology video? <laughs> Your girl Captain is psychic, I'm telling you. All jokes aside, it's not so much that I'm psychic. It's just that the situation is hella predictable. Anyway, it was basically a 4th of July family vlog. They cook, they play with the baby. It was just them two and the baby. And a whole lot of love bombing and ass kissing and... You know, jokes about how Britney left him, you know, kind of trying to show the subscribers that they have this perfect relationship and, you know, I don't know, a whole lot of love bombing and ass kissing and just, I don't know, cringe. I'm just being honest. Then at the end of the video, he apologized to the subscribers and talked about how humble he's become over the last 48 hours and also said something that got me thinking. He said that they hadn't been drinking for a long time now or for a while now, but in the video from just a couple days ago, he said the turnip was real, so who knows what's really going on. Anyway, I really hope Savage does, you know, take some self-inventory and try to humble himself and do good with his channel. Because I was rooting him on. I was. I was rooting him on for a while there. And I hope that he does right by Britney because she, like I said, she's not only a pretty face and a banging body. She seems like she's a genuine sweetheart and she deserves better. She really, really deserves better. And she cooks good, too. But anyhow, hope you all like the video. And I love you all.